Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe. I am your host, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we're going to be covering uh, Judges 16 through 18 and Luke 7, 1 through 30. Simon and Delilah, Judges 16. One day Simon went to Gaza, where he saw a prostitute. He went in to spend the night with her. The people of Gaza told Samson, told, Samson is here. So they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move during the night, saying, At dawn we will kill him. But Samson lay there only until the middle of the night. Then he got up and he and took hold of the doors of the city gate, together with the two posts, and tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders, and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Some time later he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength, and how we can overpower him, so we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you eleven hundred shekels of silver. So Delilah said to Simon, Tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can t be tied up and subdued. Simon answered her, If anyone ties me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been t dried, I'll become as weak as any other man. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried, and she tied him with them. With men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the bowstrings as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to a flame. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Then Delilah said to Samson, you have made a fool of me. You lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. He said, If anyone ties me securely with new rope that have never been used, I'll become as weak as any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him with them. Then, with men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson! My, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the rope off his arms as if they were threads. Delilah then said to Samson, All this time you have been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tied. He replied, If you weave the seven braids of my hair, if you weave the seven braids of my head into a, the fabric on the loom and tighten it with the pin. I'll become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids of his head, wove them into the fabric, and tightened it with the pin. Again she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and pulled up the pin and the loom with the fabric. Then she said to him, How can I can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you have made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. With such nagging she prodded him day after day until he was sick to death of it. So he told her everything. No razor, 
has ever been used on my head, he said, because I have been a Nazarite dedicated to God for my dedicated to God for my mother from my mother's womb. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she went. She sent word to the rulers of the Philistines, Come back once more. He has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for, Samson, for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair and so began to subdue him, and his strength left him. Then she called Samson, The Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Then the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes, and took him down to Gaza, binding him with bronze shackles. They set him to grinding grain in the prison. But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. The Death of Samson Now the rulers of the Philistines assembled to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their god, and to celebrate, saying, Our god has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hands. When the people saw him, they praised their god, saying, Our god has delivered our enemy into our hands, the one who laid waste to uh, our land and multiplied our slain. While they were in a in high spirits, they shouted, Bring out Samson to entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison, and he performed for them. When they stood him among the pillars, Samson said to the servant who had held his hand, Put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temple so that I may lean against them. Now the temple was crowded with men and women. All the rulers of the Philistines were there, and on the roof were about 3,000 men and women, watching Samson perform. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me just once more, and let me with one blow, get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. Then Samson reached toward the two center pillars on which the temple stood. Bracing himself against them, his right hand on one and his left hand on the other, Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might. And down came the temple, on the rulers, and all the people in it. Thus he killed many more when he died than while he lived. Then his brother and his father's whole family went down to get him. They brought him back and buried him between Zorah and Eshtal, in the tomb of Manah, his father. He had led Israel twenty years. Micah's Idols Judges 17 Now, a, name, a man named Micah from the hill country of Ephraim said to his mother, The eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from you and about which I heard you utter a curse. I have that silver with me. I took it. Then his mother said, The Lord bless you, my son. 
when he returned the eleven hundred shekels of silver to his mother she said i solemnly consecrate my silver to the lord for my son to make an image overlaid with silver i will give it back to you so after he returned the silver to his mother she took two hundred shekels of silver and gave them to a silversmith who used them to make the idol and it was put in mecca's house now this man mecca had a shrine and he made an ephod and some household goods and installed one of his sons as his priest in those days israel had no king everyone did as they saw fit a young levite from bethlehem in Ju judah who had been living with the clan of judah left the town in search of some other place to stay on his way he came to mecca's house in the hill country of ephraim mecca asked him where are you from i am a levite from bethlehem in judah he said and i am looking for a place to stay then mecca said to him live with me and be my father and priest and i'll give you ten shekels of silver a year your clothes and your food so the levite agreed to live with him and the young man became like one of his sons to him then mecca installed the levite and the young man became his priest and lived in his house and mecca saw now mecca said now i know that the lord will be good to me since this levite has become my priest the danities settle in lash the danities settle in lash judges 18 in those days israel had no king and in those days the tribe of the danities was seeking a place of the of their own where they might settle because they had not yet come into an inheritance among the tribes of israel so the dentes set five, sent five of their leading men from zara and eshtol to spy out the land and explore it these men represented all the dentes the dentes they told them go explore the land so they entered the hill country of ephraim and came to the house of micah where they spent the night when they were near micah's house they recognized the voice of the young levite so they turned in there and asked him who brought you here what are you doing in this place why are you here he told them what micah had done for him and said he has hired me and i am his priests when they said to him then they said to him please inquire of god and learn whether our journey will be successful the priest answered them go in peace your journey has the lord's approval so the five men left and came to lish where they saw the peop that the people were living in safety like the Sidonians at peace and secure and since their had their land lacked nothing they were prosperous also they lived a long way from the Sidonians and had no relations with anyone else when they returned to Zara and Eshtol their fellow dantites asked them how did you find things they answered come on let's attack them we have seen the land and it is very good aren't you going to do something don't hate tight 
to go there. Don't, oh, don't hesitate to go there and take it over. When you get there, you will find an unsuspecting people and a suspicious land that God has put into your hands, a land that lacks nothing whatsoever. Then 600 men at the da of the da Dantes, armed for battle, set out from Azora and es Eshtal. On their way, they set up camp near Kermath Sherma in Judah. This is why the place west of Kerith Jerma is called Mahana, Mahana Dan to this day. From there they went on the, to the hill country of Ephraim and came to Mecca's house. Then the five men who had spied out the land of Laish said to their fellow Dentites, Do you know that one of these houses has an ephod, some household gods, and an image uh, overlaid with silver. Now you know what to do. So they turned in there and went to the house of the young Levite at Mecca's place and greeted him. The 600 armed men stood at the entrance of the gate. When the five men went into Mecca's house and took the idol, the ephod, and the household goods, the priest said to them, What are you doing? They answered him, Be quiet, don't say a word. Come with us, and our, be our father and priest. Isn't it better that you serve a tribe and clan in Israel as priest? rather than just one man's household. The priest was very pleased. He took the ephod, the household goods, and the idol, and went along with the people, putting their little children, their livestock, and their possessions in front of them. They turned away and left. When they had gone some distance from Mecca's house, the men who lived near Mecca were called together and overtook the Dantes, as they shouted after them. The Dantes turned and said to Mecca, What's the matter with you that you called out your men to fight? He replied, You took the gods I made and my priests and went away. What else do I have? How can you ask what's the matter with you? The Dantes answered, don't argue with us, or some of the men may get angry and attack you, and your family will lose your lives. So the Dantites went on their way, and Mecca, seeing that they were too strong for him, turned around and went back home. Then they took that... Then... They took what Mecca had made and his priest and went on to Lash against a people at peace and secure. They attacked them with the sword and burned down their city. There was no one to rescue them because they lived a long way from Sidon and had no relationships with anyone else. The city was in a valley near Beth Roh. Rehob. The Dantites rebuilt the city and settled there. They named it Dan, after their ancestor Dan, who was born in Israel, who was born to Israel. Though the city used to be called Lish, there the Dantites set up for themselves the idol, and Jonathan, son of Gershom, the son of Moses, and his sons were priests for the tribe of Dan until the time of the captivity of the land. They continued to use the idol Mecca had made at the time the house of God was in Shiloh. 
Okay, that concludes Judges 16 through 18. Now we're going to move into Luke 7, 1 through 30. Father, I forgot to pray and mention and ask for the uh, blessing of being able to read your word. And today, seems like I'm being able to read it much better and clearer. So I thank you for that. And I thank you for those who have been able to tune into the Bible with Briscoe today. And I also thank you that uh, your word never comes back veiled. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Luke 7, let's see. The faith of the centurion. Luke 7, 1. When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people who were listening, he entered Capernaum. There a centurion's servant, whom his master valued highly, was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders to the Jew, to the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with the him, This man deserves to have you do this, because he loves our nation and has built our synagogues. So Jesus, Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house where the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve you to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes. And I, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the man who had been sent returned to the house and found his servant well. Then the man who had been sent returned to the house and found his servant well. Jesus raises a wild son. No, Jesus raises a widow's son. Luke 7, 11. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nea, Neon. Nain? Nain. Nain. There we go. Went to a town called Nain, and... His disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gates, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. Then he went up and touched the pier they were carrying him on and the bearers stood still he said young man i say to you get up the dead man sat up and began to talk and jesus gave him back to his mother they were all filled with awe and praised god a great prophet has appeared among us they said god has come to help uh, his people this new news about Jesus spread throughout Judah and the surrounding county country sorry Jesus and John the Baptist Luke 7 18 Jesus' disciples told uh, told him about all these things calling two of them he sent them to the Lord to ask are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to you.
to ask, are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured many who had, oh, cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind received sight, the lame walked, and those who have had leprosy are cleansed. The deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. After John's messengers left, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out to the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who were expensive no, those who wear expensive clothes are indulged in luxury, are in places but are in palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet. Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will pray, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, there is no one greater than John, yet. The one who is least in the kingdom of God is greatest th greater than he. All the people, even the tax collector, when they heard Jesus' words, acknowledged that God's, God's way was right, because they had been baptized by John. But the Pharisees and the experts in the law rejected God's purpose for themselves, because they had not been baptized by John. And that concludes Luke 7, 1 through 30, which concludes the Bible with Frisco for the day. Uh, tomorrow, we will be covering Judges 19 through 21 and Luke 7, 31 through 50. Father, I just thank you for your word and for the blessings that you have given us today and the opportunity to read it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Thank you for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe. And always, as always, you know, God loves you and so do I. So come back and see me again tomorrow because, well, I'll be here. And I hope that you...